put my glasses should I wear? Yeah. Can I wear these? Yeah, you can. Uh, I say we skip. I don't need to talk. We don't need to talk about regarding the outline. We don't need to talk about Mazda losing seventy two million. Maybe you'll hit on the Volvo recall in case anybody actually has that. And the, but at the whole VW turning into a, a Greek island into a. Oh, right. We'll take a take a read. She may want to muff on up. What you got in there? Oh, you would need a headphone right now. Oh, these are loud. All right. Hello, hello, my friends. You are listening to the Bad Blonde Radio Show on News Talk 1440 AM and 98.7 FM. It's a good day. In my opinion, if you're having a good day, go ahead and text us that. Chad, why is it a good day for you? Every day is a good day. No, that's not a good enough answer. I'm going to need and, a little uh, bit more out of you. Last night on my uh, 72 MGB, I got the uh, carbs worked out pretty well. Oh, is it time for me to drive it? Not yet. Uh, get to it. It's closer. Get yeah. I was a little worried, uh, but luckily... So how difficult was that? Uh, it was just mainly finding finding the issue, and I think the uh, previous owner may have fixed the carbs himself. Okay. And it runs a twin SU Skinner's Union carburetors, which that sounds like that a really cool band. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that sounds like something uh, uh, a little H4s. Odd. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So go he ahead. had the he had the float level set way lean, uh, so I found that out and. Ran pretty good. I need to drain the gas tank. I'm still going to have to go through the brake and uh, clutch hydraulics. And then I'm going to find out what else it needs. This is exciting. Although I'm still jealous that you found that sale before I did. Yeah. I could have well, really used that on, could have. In, my, in my driving repertoire. Uh, sell it to you one day. Uh-huh. So, if you are having a good day today, let me know. Text us at 882-5397. I actually had forgotten the phone number earlier. Or I would have said it. <laughs> I had to figure out what it was. <laughs> Chad, are you going to ask me why I'm having a good day? Or are you going to be ready? I was about to. Okay, good. Well, no, I... I didn't let me ask. Yeah, well, you should have done it faster. No, Let's just... no, no. Why are you having a good day, <laughs> Thank you for asking. Well, I'm happy to be home. I was in Iowa for a few days for work. Although it is going to be a bit short tomorrow, I head off to Oregon. Chad, I can hear you drinking out of that. You're going to have to <laughs> cut cut that out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so I'm happy to be home for a whole day. It's going to be lovely. I'd like to. So we have in the shop, in our mechanic shop, we have a Factory 5 AC Cobra. And the owner has agreed for me to make a drive video on it. So I am super excited to drive that car. That's a really nice car. Yeah, it hauls. It does. What's what? Do you know what the engine's in there? I, I don't remember. I didn't work on it myself. It's it's badged as a four twenty seven, but it's but not. It's, it's not. Yeah. And I don't remember. It's a small block, I believe, instead of a big block. You're right. I remember there being a thing where it is badged uh, with the big block, but it's actually a small block. Yeah, and I don't remember the engine. Unfortunately, I did not work on it myself. So what, stuff what that you, I don't work on, I don't pay as I, much attention to. I know, it, but right? I still well, like them. There's stuff going in and out, that's for sure. It's a beautiful car. I no, mean, it's, yeah, it's super nice. Does anybody else? Uh, does anybody? You know, we have like a, the other. Let's say a month ago, I saw a red Cobra, like a kit car, no doubt, in front of the post, and I was like, I haven't seen this car around town, and I wonder whose it is. Have you seen that? I'm not. I feel like I keep a little my finger on the pulse of like kit cobras that I see around town. Anybody listening has a red cobra? Text us or a cobra? Yeah. In Corpus, a kit or otherwise? Yeah. yeah. Text us, send us a pic. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Well, what are you working on at the shop? Uh, a sixty-five Jaguar XKE four point two. The silver. Yes, and. Uh, Numerous other projects. New, what is the XKA taking up all your time? 
Uh, I think that, I've got that one almost down. I hope. No way. The XK. Uh, if I, I mean, Jag, older vintage. If anybody's listening, vintage Jaguars are going to be in and out of the mechanic shop, but they're a labor of love. Everybody loves them. Yes, they uh, they need a lot of attention. Also working on seventy nine MGB, a two thousand fifteen Range Rover, two thousand five Mercedes CLK compressor. Cool, cool. Uh, 76 Mercedes 450 SL. A lot. I'm working on a lot. Sweet. I really just asked that so I can see what's in there. So if I want to make a video on it. <laughs> yeah, they're all cool. So I also need to announce, guys, we are going at the bottom of the hour for Beer 30. We are going to have Gary Moore on the show. Junior. Gary Moore Jr., you're right. We need to differentiate there. Now, Gary, we've known Gary for a long time. We've had, uh, what he's, I know he's coming to the shop since he was, I don't know, in his like late 20s because I've heard stories about him wandering in there and befriending our father. But uh, he's pretty cool. He's gonna, he owns Revolutionary Insurance Group and he's also a classic car aficionado. And he's gonna come on here and we're gonna talk classic cars because that's kind of our jam. Yeah, and if you have a classic car, well, Gary has classic car insurance. <laughs> you're going to need for your classic car. So, yeah. Have you already gotten insurance for your MGB? I have not yet. I haven't, I haven't uh, titled it or anything yet. I'm going to get it running and stuff, and then I will be talking to Gary. That makes sense. That makes sense. Now, I was, you know, like I like to do, I peruse automotive news and headlines and what all's going on. And so this is a really neat thing, guys. VW is turning a Greek island into a model of green mobility. And you might be saying, well, what does that even mean? It's taking all of their modes of transportation and making them electric. Isn't that weird? It'll be, that'll be interesting. I think, well, the, the, the interesting thing is, who thought of this? Oh, you know what? Actually, I read the article, so I'll tell you who thought of it. <laughs> Uh, the Greek island, and I can't even say it. Lesbos. No, stop it. <laughs> it's Astypalea, A-S-T-Y-P-A-L-E-A, -E which, I, if anybody can pronounce that, let me know, because that seems very difficult. Anyways, they actually were looking to do this, and they wanted to be kind of the, what would the word for it, the, the, the first one on the scene for doing everything electric. Like from scooters to motor, you know, motorcycles to automotives and transportation, everything. And they actually reached out to Volkswagen. And Volkswagen said, "Well, you know what? Let's do it." Okay. Did you did you read the article that I sent you, Chad, or did you not do your homework, young man? I was on Facebook. No, <laughs> I did not actually read that article. I apologize. Well, that's disappointing. It'll be interesting to see electric cities. The only problem with electricity is the uh, energy has to come from somewhere. Exactly. And usually the somewhere is either yeah. nuclear or uh, coal or fossil fuel generated. So, and the, There's the, no perfect solution. Everybody thinks that uh, uh, I oh, think, electricity is, I think, is pristine, but it's not. It's no, and pros the, and cons to each source of energy, for sure. All the rare earth minerals, which they call them rare earth, which means there's not many of them have to be mined, and it's kind of a uh, precisely <laughs> a dirty process to mine all of these. Uh, and battery recycling or disposal is also a very dirty process. So yeah, I'm not sure if the electric world is the exact way to go. I don't. I don't know. They're still trying to work it out. No, it it is not. It, like you said, there's pros and cons to any energy source, and I think, I mean, and the consumer market will probably depict what's and going the, to actually and, happen. And the prices of being able to afford a, a vehicle or to heat your own. Yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of electric vehicles, what did you think about the new Hummer EV? I think that's funny. <laughs> right? If you had told me 10 years ago that there was going to be an electric Hummer, I would have been like, huh? It's funny, I went from a huge diesel engine and yeah. a Hummer, which if you've ever been in a Hummer, uh, it's it's was made for troop transportation or whatever. Not exactly ergonomics. <laughs> no, and, and when you have the transmission tunnel just separating every the two sides of the car by like two feet, you really can only fit like 
four people in that, yeah. that whole huge vehicle. It's it's pretty funny. It, uh, I'm it, not sure who <laughs> who who got all the money on that one. Uh, it's ironic. Well, I was uh, you know like I was doing some research and I was checking it out and they have all these like little quirky parts of it um there's something odd like it's the the part of the speaker and in, in the interior is the moonscape and it actually has like a um the footprint of of our first astronaut that that stepped on there it's just I don't know it's interesting um it's it's gonna be something to watch to see which one of these electric you know, trucks or UV, you know, utility vehicles, the Tesla and a few others are actually coming out. You know, I feel like uh, the Hummer was, they planned their timing well, because really, you know, it's like Tesla came out with their electric truck. Although that, I mean, do you, did you, do you remember when that was debuted? Yes. That was hilarious. And I don't know if that was for uh, effect or, well, it got everybody talking. So there was yeah. uh, the fact that that he he said that it was bulletproof glass, which I think that's freaking cool if it actually is. And then he threw that like lead ball onto it, and everything absolutely it sh shattered. Yeah, I, think that, <laughs> I think that was for oh, effect, and and you and got you talking about it. I remembered it. I'm still talking about it. It was just hilarious. I could not. I just couldn't get enough of it. I was like, yes, throw it again. Let's see if the next time, if it works. <laughs> I think what electric vehicles will come down to is, is in the end, economy, pricing, and then range. Yeah, um, agreed. If you, if, you can't, if you can't drive from here to Houston without having to stop and recharge, uh, that's... Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. Texas might be a uh, difficult market for that because we are so spread out. Yeah, and, and that's a good point also is is the United States is very spread out. So it's Truly. it's a different market than Europe and Asia for sure. Absolutely. And on that note, we are gonna take a little break and you will be back listening to the Bad Blonde Radio Show, News Talk, K E Y S, 1440 AM and ninety-eight point seven FM. I was next so loud. Huh? Oh, I can change it. Okay, good. Uh, that, that was Dobson's. Huh? That was Dobson's. So you yeah, you're right. Uh, or you want to go? What is the, what is a classic car? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and just start talking about it because that outline fucking sucks. <laughs> I don't, I don't. I was like, I don't want to talk about my. Like, I think I was just being a go getter, and I put all this stuff. I don't even want to talk. I don't want, don't no, really no, no, need to no, talk no. about the Volvo recall. Although the Ford Mustang Shelby GT350 ending this model year is something to talk about, but we don't really need to talk about that. Everybody's everybody. Yeah, let's just start talking about classic cars. I'll just talk, you know, uh, ABS, blah, 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 the plastics of the cars, all the junk. Yeah. The disappearance. That's I'm really gonna let you take the lead. Makes yeah. What is that? The chihuahua. Kind of hung over. I um went to an engagement party last night and they had prosecco and. I was like, oh, delicious. This is great. And then this morning, death. Absolute death. <laughs> Mom just texted, Chevy Bolts are catching fire. Batteries, 2017 to 2019. Chevy Bolt. Volt. 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 B. Volt? Yes. They don't make the Chevy Volt anymore. It's the Volt. That's ridiculous. Sure. I think he's letting Gary in. I don't know how you cut myself. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> Wondering how to. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was a cool article. So you need to buy one of these. 
I sent you the link. Buy it. That way we don't have to stress about this shit. What's his name's not there? All right. Hello, hello, my friends. You are listening to the Bad Blonde Radio Show. Welcome back. Today is a good day. If you're having a good day, go ahead and text me why. I will say it on air, especially if it's funny. 882 Now, we are going to start talking classic cars. I'm excited about that. Now, also on that note, if you have a favorite classic car, please text me about that. We can talk about it. 882 Chad? This is exciting. This is kind of like what we were raised in. Classic cars is our cup of tea. It is. But what is a classic car? Tell me. Tell me about it. I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, that's, it's a, I guess that's, that's going to well, be wait, an okay, ongoing so debate. Of it what? is an ongoing. And in vintage and classic and antique and brass era. Like there's a lot of different, obviously brass era is way different. I can get into that. But. There is an actual definition of a classic car. There is, and I believe, at least in Texas, uh -huh. it's 25 years and older, technically. Dang, my Toyota Avalon's approaching that. <laughs> there you go, and you can get classic plates, but that all, that has its own uh, little stuff. Yeah, what are the pros and cons of that, exactly? Uh, like, I know we've had a lot of cars that are- If are, you have classic tags, you can, uh, you have a five-year renewal, and I believe it's like $10 a year, um, but you only are supposed to go to special events in it, and there's technically oh, cool. supposed to be a mileage limit. Um, how? I wonder how they would keep track of that. Well, it's, I think there's some areas that you could run antique plates. Uh, yeah. Those are antique, actually. Antique plates give you that opportunity to only... Uh, have a five year renewal, no state inspections either. Oh my God. And I it, love that because I literally, I'm that person that procrastinates and I don't get my state inspection until it's like, I'm, it's embarrassing. I walk into Brooks Tires and I'm like, hey guys, can you? And they're like, it's been three, it's three months over. <laughs> like, three years. I know, right? <laughs> so you can go the antique plate route. Uh, I probably would recommend that more for somebody who has an antique car that they're not driving very often. Uh, if you want to drive your car more, you can register also as a classic car, and that's for cars over 25 years also, uh, for you know $40 what? a year with no driving restrictions. You know what, we're silly. We should just wait to talk about that kind of, that specifically when Gary comes on. Yeah, so, we, we will <laughs> I know, I was like, he's the guy that's gonna have all the deets, all the information. So guys, at the bottom of the hour for Beer 30, we are going to have Gary Moore of Revolutionary. Junior. Gary Moore Jr. I know, I keep dropping the junior. Shame on me. Come in and talk about classic cars. He's one of the go-to guys. Um, for classic car insurance around here. And also he's a family friend. We've we've known him for a while. He takes his Triumph Bonneville into the shop. We had that in there for a while, right? Yes, and he's had uh, 911, and I'm sure he'll talk about his different vehicles. He's a classic car we have, enthusiast as well. We have his son's 280 ZX yes. in, the, in the shop right now, which the, uh, I guess on air, I'll ask him if I can make a drive video on that. <laughs> but what, what wind, does the classic car era end? When do you think, like, is a 2002 Toyota Camry ever going to be a classic car the way a <laughs> 57 Chevy Bel Air became oh, a classic car? God, that just made me chuckle. No, absolutely not. And on the subject of Bel Air, I once almost got lost my life at being sandwiched between a 911 Targa and a 53 Bel Air. Do you remember that? You may have not been to the shop. Somebody... Somebody got in their car, started it, and, oh, yeah. and and I I had just walked away. He barged into that '53 Chevy, uh, Chevy Bel Air, and just as I had walked away from it, yes, uh, almost cut me off at the knees. Was, uh, 
All I'm saying is, I'm like, that was it. That was something else. I was all, oh my god, did I almost get run over? By God, and I did almost get run over. But if I'm gonna go, it's probably gonna. Uh, I'll go that way. No, because they call it a. They call it the squeeze. I think oh. is what I've heard. Is when what? you get pinched. Oh. So you don't want to back the car up, but if you stay pinched together with the car, the you two don't cars have a lot of blood loss. They'll stay alive, but once you back up, so. Uh. You just have to live between two cars for as long as you can. <laughs> <laughs> that was outdoors in downtown Corpus Christi. I would have been been, been close friends with bums yeah. if that was the case. Could have got a tent and some other things. <sighs> okay, so anyway, back to what, topic. What, yes. uh, when do you think the classic car died off? When do you think? When the bean counters got involved. All right. The cars we have. What year are you thinking? Um, I feel like with the safety things that happened in the 70s and mid like in seven what 74 75 were the u.s okay so guys for everybody listening uh the u.s government um ooh, and i'm not saying this is a bad thing okay now they impl- implemented you know safety standards and <laughs> that's not a bad thing but it did take away a lot of the sauce of cars and car manufacturing and car styles and it prevented some cars from actually importing over here now, safety and uh, emissions standards change things a lot. And I feel like, honestly, I'm going to say 79, 78. I'd go, I'd go late, like 88 or something myself. And tell me have... tell me what, what your thought process is behind that. Well, I agree with you also. Is, is the safety standards, uh, lawsuits, lawyers. Uh, well, and also just the, the bottom line, um, and, and, bean counters. So and, like, Yeah, you started to see where one manufacturer would be making numerous, numerous different models yeah. on all different platforms. They figured out, hey, you know, we can make a car and then we'll make a truck and we'll put them on the same thing. And we'll say one's a sports car and one's a truck. That saves up some cash, but yes. it doesn't make cool cars. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, that, and that, so I, right now I'm reading Lee Iacocca's autobiography and he taps on that too because he was in the Ford he was in Ford when Ford hired the whiz kids as they called them um like a group of 10 gentlemen that came out of the military that they literally approached Ford Motor Company and they said hey guys if you hire all of us we will turn Ford around and Ford at that time was lacking a lot of like uh they needed much assistance managerially and they hired them, and that was probably that. That and Lee Iacocca said, while they did a fantastic job and they did improve, it was the start of lack a lack of of spirit and soul and car design because it was the bottom line basically. Yeah, the uh, the economy and I guess the business changed, and uh, crash re- regulations also is a big factor in oh um, yeah the design of cars now yeah uh and and like you said economy like no more there's not much that much metal in cars <laughs> a lot less than it used to be you know? right uh you can look at an engine of an old classic car and there's just metal everywhere and it's really a, a piece of art in its own just the engine uh even the fuel line layout uh Brass fuel lines just looking amazing and handmade by some guy or whatever. Right. Just, uh, you don't, if you pop a 2017 Corvette hood, you're going to see a bunch of plastic <laughs> covered by a piece of plastic. And a little bit more plastic. Yeah. They right. don't want you to see all the plastic under the plastic. So really looking, I see a lot of people popping their hoods at, at like, uh, car shows, car show or, or parking lots or whatever. Uh-huh. But I'm like, what are you? What are you looking at? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're really looking at. Uh, it's not to poke fun at anybody, but you did a little bit. I, now we're gonna to, get hate mail. Thank you. Which Pebble <laughs> Beach, or if you ever go to some oh. place like that with some older, older vintage cars. See, and that's my cup of tea. Uh, the, you can just stare at the engines for an hour, just in the engine of the car, not even the body, 100%. not the interior, which those all have their own amazing aspects you know an interior of a classic car go to that compared to you know now which of course classic cars like that are not very ergonomic at all there's no cup holders they tend to put the light switches in very weird places 
like reaching through the steering wheel and stuff. Yes, but. no, no it, it, ergonomics was a learned trick. Now on that note, we are gonna take a little break and when we come back, we are gonna have Gary Moore on to talk about classic cars. Stay tuned to the Bad Blonde Radio Show. Good morning, how's it going? Uh, hey Gabe, right. hey, do you know, um, sorry, oh, come right. on in. Hey Gabe, do you know where- What's up Gary, what's up man? How's it going? Good, good. Yeah. Where'd I go? Uh, probably right there. Can we see what uh, the dude says? Right. How you been? Man, I've been great. Been great. How's it going? How are you? Come on in, have a seat. I'm just, All right. I need to get, make sure we Yeah, have he's, this he's dragging, we're going to go pick up the debts in a minute, so. He, oh, really? He's just going to hang out. That's exciting. You can come in here, probably, yeah. too, if you want. Yeah, come on in. You come in here and sit for a second? Yeah. Sure. You can get on the mic. Well, not my not, show. We might not hear. Don't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't need to hand that to you because oh, it's not yeah. even set up. I'm okay. waiting for Gabe to help out. Cool. Well, y'all. Y'all know acapella. Have to do acapella. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 We're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing? <laughs> do, what are we doing? Uh, I don't know. Basically, yeah. well, for this, we're gonna like talk classic cars. I guess if you know, like, I guess we can go talk about kind of. Well, let's talk about. We'll the, talk about the your cars and stuff. And and then, and yeah. yeah. All your cars. And maybe like Texas is stuff for a classic car and plating more yeah i'm only really familiar with the with the uh classic plates the uh, whatever but we can talk about that yeah. and then like yeah i was all like why are we talking about this gary's not even in here we didn't wait yeah, for him insurance for the class i thought it was good to uh you know get it uh get, you know set up kind of teed up mm -hmm. yeah so, um sparks mentions. yeah yeah so thanks for having me on Oh, yeah, our, our thanks for coming. Right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and thanks for the junior. You don't have to use the junior anymore. That was good. I just wanted that one distinction. So <laughs> I, yeah, I, well, was, she kept saying, I forgot every time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, and then uh, you know, it may not be a bad idea to just say you know, in Portland City Councilman. Or yes, council member I kept meaning whatever, to. Uh, it was in the back of my head, and I forgot to say it. Yeah, because um, I forgot to put it in my original thing. So okay. it's okay. Portland yeah. CEO revolutionary. Gary, at bottom of the hour, would do beer thirty. Do cool. you want me to pour you any, or uh, you're good? Sure. Okay. Have you got your headphones for No, we're waiting on Gabe to find an adapter. Oh, bomb.com. Thank you, kind sir. All right. So, so what do we do? There's a thing. One that I just dropped. No, you're good. Oh yeah. Look at that. Yes. Yeah. Voila! We are in like sin. And what's your name? Preston, cool. Good to meet yeah. you. I don't know if it's working. Although I may have met you yeah, at like it a younger age. It probably will, and then you just keep your like mic, basically. Do you hear recording. anything now? Yeah. Okay. And it's the mics are directional, so just kind of keep it like yeah, right there. That's all good. All right. And if you can hear their ad, yeah, I can hear their ad right now, so we're good. And then uh, we'll talk about cars or whatever, whatever you want, and then we'll go into classic car insurance and what. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we can just kind of touch on some of that stuff. If y'all have questions on it, things that might be good for people, that'd be great. And then, uh, uh, but you know me, I like talking cars, so. Yeah, well, we can do that, but I figured, yeah. I mean, we got a lot of like, our one listeners. My parents uh, have classic cars. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good time uh, to people with classic cars meet classic cars, you know, and a lot of people don't even know about that. Yeah. So it's a good time to. Right. A lot of people don't. Your dad and I were talking about that yesterday. What are y'all talking about? How a lot of people don't know about uh, classic car insurance. They just have both state farm, they have all state. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. That's why I think it would be good for yeah. them. And, well, state farms isn't too bad, I guess, but I won't pick on state farm. I'm not going to pick on anybody. <laughs> yeah. Pick on yeah. And uh, I got a white flaw in here if you need, you need a claw. Uh, well, whatever. Do you, you like wanna, this? You want a claw for beer 30? Probably not. I'd probably life. rather have a claw. Okay. I think I got watermelon and mango. I want men and are loving actually, white actually it's white both claw. mango. Cool. It, it's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I saw the Nueces Brewery people on uh, when you told me to look it up. So yeah. I watched that episode. That was cool. That was fun. Yeah. They're good guys. Yeah. They're really fun. I like them. So we got a, I love it because like I'm always like, Texas, Texas, Texas. And we actually got a text to a guy named... Ross, he's like, I used to own a used car dealership, classic cars, and he's like, I sold Datsuns, blah, 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 all this. Oh, he sold Datsuns new. Oh, wow, cool. Okay. And then he did sold them used. So that was like, when did, 
Nissan actually finally 80, owned 83. The well, they owned it the whole time. Well, you, you know, but they but didn't, they, they were scared of actually. Yeah, they got rid of the co branding oh, about to in 83. 82 was last year. They owned it like a when did they stop treating it like a redheaded stepchild? <laughs> <laughs> when they got rid of it. <laughs> All right, all right. Hello, my friends. You're listening to the Bad Blonde Radio Show, and you know what time it is. It is the bottom of the hour, a.k.a. Beer 30. Although, I'm the only one drinking beer around here, all right? So I have Chad Shook, premier mechanic, and uh, my second favorite brother. And then Gary Moore Jr., member of the Portland City Council, CEO of Revolutionary Insurance Group. Say hi, guys. How's it going? Hi, guys. Very funny. I'm not going to say that again. Okay, so I, you know, for Beer 30, I usually like to go local, but this morning I woke up with a hankering for a Mitchell Adam. And so I drove myself to uh, the local Stripes and I got a Modelo Chilada Mango and Chile. Nice. And tell, guys, tell tell everybody what y'all are drinking. Just open it yet. Well, tell everybody what y'all are drinking. Well, I, I also decided to go mango, but I decided to go with the white claw. Gary yeah. brought us white claw. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I brought us white Guys, claw. and actually, there is no shame because I have so many dude friends that positively love white claw. Like, they're, 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 claw, they're white claw aficionados now. It's sparkling water with a hint of mango. Mango. Fantastic. And it's gluten-free. All right, we're going to do the official pop top. You ready? Ready. Do it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Good sounds. Happy Saturday, everybody. Mm. Oh, Fantastic. that's delightful. It's a little sweeter. Oh, my God. That, that is we're, sweet. We're all rocking the mango. That is sweet and tangy. So, Gary, why is your day a good day today? Well, because I got invited to come here. Right? And I get to talk <laughs> about cars. Yeah, and you are going to go pick up your 280ZX, right, and drive it around? I am. So, I've had the pleasure of driving that. Mostly, not 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 anywhere far, but literally when we park it in the shop. It's not so, bad. It's yeah. coming together. At the end of the day, we pull all our cars into the mechanic shop, and I'll get the ZX uh, keys. And I'm like, okay, all right, and yeah, that's that's the extent of it. Don't worry, I didn't I didn't Ferris Bueller parking attendant <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the ZX. Now this is a project car for you and your son, right? Which that's is super sweet. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So my son Preston, he wanted to uh, to learn how to work on cars a little bit. Um, Which is solid. It is That's solid. That's fantastic. You don't see a lot of that anymore. And uh, he wanted a, a particular set of cars, one with like Honda S2000. He likes the long hood stuff. And then he Those just, are good looking cars in my opinion. They are. They I are. think so. They're good cars. And then I, I'm not sure where he, he got it, but he decided he wanted to uh, uh, try to look for a Datsun 280ZX. Cool. And, Good uh, job, buddy. Actually, Preston is in the in the in the box today. Yeah, he's sitting behind us here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so we found this one up in Mason County, and uh, where is Mason County? Kind of north of Fredericksburg. That, okay. Yeah, it was, but it was a solid cool. car. Yeah. Um, for someone had to really mess with it too much, and, and That's so nice. which is hard to find. Truly. And uh, the price was right, and we brought it back to life because it was. It was in a position where it was going to stay there and rot, or we were going to pick it up and uh, bring it back to life. And I'm so happy y'all picked it up. Yeah, yeah. Like that, yeah. That is that is so funny. Is if somebody doesn't see the the gold and yeah in those hills, yeah. somebody <laughs> else will just let the you know the some car like that sit and rot away. You know, so you yes. are a savior. Yeah, with, without that, it's re it's really fun. It's been bonding. Uh, you know, y'all shops done an amazing job. So I like the new uh, the wheels you put on there. Yeah, it, so it, Preston picked those out. Good it's job, buddy. Yeah, he even went inside to go with the fifteen inch, so he could have more tire, which I kind of like that. I think Solid. it's good. So yeah, yeah without a doubt. So, so what else have y'all had to do to it? Well, that's what we've done so far. Um, we had to get it running and driving, mm -hmm. and then we'll have to finish up with body work and interior. We're going to start on that. Wait, wait, wait. Are you not going to keep that patina? It's kind of, guys, uh, it's like a lovely orange copper color. Well, it's two-tone. It's brown yeah, and copper. Exactly. Yeah, I like that. With, I think you should keep the patina, man. I'm with you. Preston, can we press, peer pressure you into this? I feel like we should peer pressure you into this. <laughs> It has orange carpet. You gotta sign um, it right now. I've only driven it at night when we park in, so I actually don't. I'm familiar with the with driving that in the dark, but I haven't actually seen what the color of the interior is. Orange. 
It, it, just the carpet. Orange. Yeah, it's tan, but the carpet is orange. My, Intriguing. I remember one of my friend's dads had one of those brand new. Wow. Real, and it was cool. It's uh, a hot looking car. The seats in that car, though, are funny, right? But yeah, they're not going to stay in there all that yeah, long. Yeah, uh, they're terrible. Get rid, but it's it's such a, a funny seat to put in a sports car. It's it's like a late a lounge chair. I, I, how would you describe it? You know. Yes, I would. Uh, I would describe it as a lounge chair, especially if you look at it going from the seventy eight two eighty Z to the seventy nine two eighty ZX, which you know maintained the same seats till they went to the three hundred. Um, <laughs> it's just a big. Big difference. Like leather seat. And it, it's really comfortable. <laughs> Lazy boy. But it's like, you know, this is a sports car. Come on, man. Give me my sports seat. It needs to be more sleek. Yeah. So, so guys, I up. actually got a text message from a gentleman uh, on our on our 1440 keys text, which if you want to text, 882-5397. Now, a gentleman named Ross actually sold Dotson's new. How that's, cool is that? That's super awesome. Right? I think that's really cool. And so he also had a 280ZX Turbo as his driver nice car pretty sweet very sweet yeah and uh i don't know i love that anyways thanks for texting that in ross that's so pretty cool and uh gary you're a lover of various automobilia i have what kind of vehicles that have you had over time and motorcycles and such let's hear it wow well so currently uh, i have more motorcycles than i do classic vehicles but you know i'm always working on that <laughs> uh, I have a 71 Norton Commando, which is a uh, awesome. nice pride and joy. Yes. I have not seen that. Uh, it's a beautiful motorcycle. Cool. Uh, that, that one is probably my favorite. Uh, it was, now, I also just had in your shop a, a 76 BMW R90 yep. slash 6. Did, awesome. you, did you cruise that one around? Oh, I've been cruising that one everywhere. That's good. a great one. <laughs> good, yeah. good. Good, good, good. And then, uh, and like you had brought up in the break, 77 Triumph Bonneville. Um, that one, yeah. I still need to do a little bit more too, but... Uh, uh, that's always a fun bike as well. Um, you know, the 1979 11 T Targa, and the T is not for Targa. So, <laughs> um, that that was a great uh, a great car. I enjoyed that. Cool that. Um, do you still have that? No, I sold that one a few years ago. Uh, do you right, miss it? Right before they shot in value. I do miss no. it. I do. It yeah. was such a, a solid car. Um, 1976 BMW 2002. Uh, oh, awesome. racing with that one. That was a great, great car. Cool. Yeah, I always, um, always loved the 2002s. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. As far as other classics, uh, in high school, I, ended, I had a uh, 1956 Chevy uh, two-door. Uh, cool. It was a 210 Businessman's Coupe. And, Businessman's Coupe. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was a, and for those who don't know, what that means is the rear windows would roll down halfway. Otherwise, they're fixed. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're a businessman, you give the people in the back a little bit of air. A little bit of air. Not much. But not, not all the air. Just a <laughs> little. All right. I got to interrupt this because I just got a really, really nice text message from Annie. Annie says, hi, bad blonde and brother Chad. We also call him the bad Chad, Annie, if you want to call him bad Chad. She says, really enjoy your show. And since you follow the Veterans Roundtable, you are holding on to listeners from all over the country and even the world. I, I think I'm tearing up right now, guys. She said, we appreciated your discussion of electric cars and how the power source has to come from somewhere, often very polluting sources. And as you said, it really affects the range and thinking about charging stations and waiting to charge your car on a long road trip is crazy. We live in California and the governor here has decided to outlaw the purchase of new gas power vehicles by 2035. She's right. And I thought the, 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 the audacity of that governor to make such a mandate is disgusting. Frankly, right. you're right. right, Annie. Thank you for texting. That makes, that is such a treat. I am so glad you texted Thank me you, that. Annie. Yeah, that is nice. And that, as, I got goosebumps, guys. As a veteran, I do appreciate her. You know, listening to Veterans Roundtable that is a good program. The yeah. Um, but you're right. So when I saw that, I was thinking, well, this is going to be interesting because where's the lithium going to come from? Uh, I mean, that, exactly. I mean, that's China. Uh, a lot. <laughs> and and probably here because it, it's it is we are a resource here. Mm -hmm. yeah, we get a rare earth minerals, uh -huh. and uh, that means. Or unless we start mining the moon. The only good thing is uh, Gavin Newsom of California uh, is not going to be governor forever. It's true. Uh, you're Somebody right. can overturn his, uh, his... Yeah, it's just infuriating, frankly. The cons consumers should decide how what, what happens well, and how that goes. No, I, I would agree. And, and I've driven several Teslas, and they're fantastic. They yeah. really are. They're so good. And yeah. I, I was really amazed with it. So I'm not 
anti-electric car. Me neither. But, but it, nothing's perfect, and people are assuming that's a perfect solution, and that is absolutely incorrect. I would I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about your test drive. On the the Tesla. On the Tesla, yeah. Wow. So both of the ones I've driven are the uh, Model Three Performance. Yeah. And um, and Performance, oh, it is. Oh, cool. Yeah, it, it'll, uh, it'll throw you back. Is it's, that here in Corpus? Because I want to test drive too. So I, I did a test drive here in Corpus. Who's um, the connection? Who do I need a message? Tesla.com. Oh, really? <laughs> it's is it that easy? It is that easy. <laughs> oh, it, wonderful. And, uh, but no, it's, uh, it's and then my cousin actually has them all three. He autocrosses. What? Yeah. No way. No, I'm serious. That is hilarious. And that's pretty, probably a pretty good autocross car. I, uh, they have an instant torque no, generation. Unbelievable. And that's also what they mentioned in the Hummer EV that there is just, it is instant torque. Oh, I can like, imagine. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. But that as the, uh, the, RPMs of the engine, the electric motor, increase, that drops off. Uh, so you do have that instant, but you don't have the high end as much as a gasoline powered car. Very true. Uh, it'll be the electric car business and everything's going to be interesting. Uh, well, I, think I actually think hydrogen is probably the way to go. I was going to also, I was going to bring that up as well. So like the Honda Clarity uh, runs on the liquid hydrogen. I don't think they ever brought to, you know, manufacturing but you know you, you what it what it basically does is you have a generator that's being powered by liquid hydrogen and the only emission is water and the generator powers the electric uh, motors of the wheels you know yeah. i i'm gonna be honest like i'm absolutely ignorant of this yeah that sounds super intriguing i'm and interested uh, i'm gonna do some googling i'm interested in hydrogen and natural gas which in south america they run uh, when i went to peru uh, they have natural gas filling stations everywhere. Interesting. And uh, the price of natural gas, they have, they have a lot of natural gas down there. So the price of natural gas compared to petrol yeah. is like... Petrol. <laughs> and, and I think, I can't remember the currency, I believe it was sole. So it's like 60 sole to $8 sole or whatever, you know? Wow. Yeah, so huge difference. And these people are running cars that have uh, natural gas tanks and they've changed some injectors and stuff. So they're running gas and natural gas through the same car. They can just flip the switch and switch off to either that is so fuel cool. source. Yeah, that is absolutely so cool. And on that note, we are going to take a little break, and we hope you stay tuned to listening to the Bad Blonde Radio Show. And you remember to think uh, competition sounds at some point. Awesome. Good job, that. buddy. Thanks. Wham, this is bam. Fun. It is and fun. Now, right? uh, yeah. like this episode, we, we'll get into, or this, we have 15 minutes and yeah, we'll do, uh, talk about insurance. It's just stuff. funny. It's funny how it just goes along and then you end yeah. up in different. You really, I, I, like, I like that. Right. And uh, at least we're, we're talking about things that I can contribute to. Yeah. I don't know. Just, as long as we're not talking about football, I'm okay. Is there a Saxon gun show going on? Maybe, but those are, you don't want to go to a gun show right now. Yeah, so there's a guy named Michael that says, That's cool. On my way to Saxon Gun Show, my first car was a Chevelle mm. SS396, race nice. mini, a 240Z, smoked them all. They thought their sports cars were quick. Oh, saucy. Yeah. Nice. Michael, saucy. I'm going to give Michael a shout out. I'm going to. It's so nice. We've gotten so many text messages. That Annie one, I can't believe they're listening from California. That's so awesome. I sent that one. No, you didn't. Because Bob Jones puts, he puts all their the, the names on there. So she has a name that means Bob Jones. Or it means she's already in the system. Okay. You will not be able to. We did have a good amount of text. I'm Maybe super happy. Should. That's good. How many uh, episodes have you done so far? I've only done three years. You've done Four. like, I think five. Yeah. And yeah, I feel I'm like I did probably, I've done maybe 10 or 11. Okay, cool. You Still very good. You haven't that many before. I haven't? You only I felt like, like I, two or three. I guess you're right. Not Maybe I did, yeah. And then the Longhorns cancel us out whenever they're playing in the morning. Yeah. So. You get a, we get a Saturday. That's what, and then I gotta wear sunglasses because I get the bags under my eyes real bad. I, yeah, it's early. <laughs> I have a Prosecco <laughs> headache right now. It's getting better though. Uh, I just had some, uh, just. Oh. Hello, hello, 
Hello and welcome back to the Bad Blonde Radio Show on News Talk KEYS Corpus Christi, 1440 AM and 98.7 FM. That's right, we're on FM now too, which is kind of a big deal. And in the box, I have Chad Shook, my second favorite brother, and Gary Moore, one of our classic car enthusiasts. Say hey guys. Don't hey guys. just say hey guys, Chad. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Gary Moore is more than a classic car enthusiast also. Also, he provides classic car insurance, which if you have a classic car and you did not know this, they have specific insurance made to for classic cars. Well, that's what all of our, yeah, like with our, our family cars, everything's, called, you know, we do classic car insurance. That's the way to go. Yeah, and, and it's amazing how many people aren't, don't realize that it's out there. And uh, Yeah, this is important. Everybody listening, this could save you some bucks, man. Oh, yeah. lots, lots. So and tell and us. get more coverage. It's uh, it's pretty amazing because you have to think about these these companies. So, like, some of the companies we do business with, you know, Safeco has a, a classic program. Um, Grundy has one. But my all-time favorite is Haggerty. I love Haggerty. Um, they also have all the fun events when I go to car shows. They do. And I weasel my way in from the back, in the back door. I'm like, oh, they're all, are you invited, fam? I'm like, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> but I did actually get to meet, like, what, President and CEO McKeel. Mc- am me. I saying his name right? McKeel, yes. McKeel Haggerty. So the guy that runs Haggerty has the last name of Haggerty. My mind was blown. So I met him at Amelia Island's, um, Amelia Island Concourse this Right before COVID-19 shut everything down in the U.S. It was a very fun, fun event. Now, pardon my digress. Go sure. ahead. Keep, yeah. going. Keep yeah, going, Gary. What are the benefits uh, of having classic car insurance? Well, I think the biggest benefit, and, and I'm just going to kind of focus on Haggerty, is um, guaranteed value. Now, there's a difference between stated value and guaranteed value. You can say your car is worth, you know, uh, $50,000, but then... There's depreciation that's uh, put in there as well. So you may or may not get your 50000 With Haggerty, it's guaranteed value. What you come up with and they agree upon, then they call it guaranteed. There's no questions asked. If there's a total cool. loss, you get it. That's great. Some of the other things is most on most of the classics, you know, zero deductibles on common collision. And uh, um, I'll give you an example on that uh, 1979 11 I had. Yeah. I was driving down the causeway and a, a pebble hit my uh, my light and broke it the horror oh, terrible <laughs> yeah. and so uh, i sent them my receipt from uh, paragon products and they gave me that and they paid me five hours labor which took me 30 seconds to put back on so that's nice. phenomenal and, uh, uh t- cost wise uh, what you're you're talking about right uh, classic car insurance usually is a lot cheaper than if you were going the regular route it's a fraction of the cost it's unbelievable and uh, so we'll have people that they're like, oh, we just want liability. I don't drive it much. And yeah. Um, and Haggerty's, you know, they won't offer that unless it's a race car or something that's not street legal. And um, uh, and it doesn't make any difference because it's so inexpensive. Everyone's cool. So and then they have teams that are out constantly going to swap meets and they're. Yeah. No, I, I know a fair amount. Like Haggerty is really out and about and they're in the bit like they are they out are. in the business. I know I can like. Your, your buddy that came down. Oh, yeah, Sean Walker. Sean, yeah, Sean came down, and then I was going to the Grossbeck Grand Prix, and he ho- he hooked me, he, like, connected me with the other, um, the Haggerty folks that were going to be at that event. They reached out to me. They're like, hey, here's VIP. Come here, have fun, have blast. Awesome. Haggerty is really, they have the finger, their fingers on the pulse of classic cars, in my opinion. Yeah, I and agree. I'm, they don't promote this. I Actually, agree. Competition Sounds is our sponsor, and thank you, Competition Sounds. Yeah, that place is awesome. Too. I know, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you need to get some some womp womp while you're driving down the street, that's the place to go to. Local legends. Local legends. Yeah, They're how long, long have time. they been in t- business? It's a I'm long not sure, time. But I've always remembered competition styles being around. Right? Well, I know I was buying things in at least 99 or 2000. Wow. So, okay, so that's like yeah. a Man, that's If a you testament. wanted uh, classic car insurance in Corpus Christi, you would go to Gary Moore. No, <laughs> you would go to... Uh, so go to revgroupusa.com. You can uh, submit a request there, or you can call 361-991-9000, and I believe it's option two. And um, and uh, if you're in town, you can maybe have Chris Scott take you to lunch. I'm uh, just kidding. <laughs> I'm friends with one of the guys that works at uh, uh, one of your employees, Gary. Yeah. You yeah. know, he, slack, he slacks off all the time. He's not really working. Just oh, so I know. don't believe that. 
<laughs> so the cool thing about classic car insurance is it it will pay you off better if you do have an incident and it's way cheaper and a lot of people don't know that they can get classic car insurance now if, the classic car insurance though is that your your car has to be 25 years old or older so no uh it doesn't uh for the most yeah, let's part hear some specifics for the most part they're looking at is it collectible, right? So 1982 and back is their kind of cutoff mark with some exceptions. So modern classics. So if you have, uh, for example, 93 um, Cobra, right? The SVT Cobra. Sweet. That would be a good example. The earlier um, Mazda Miata MX-5s, right? The earlier ones and uh, those Yeah, are I guess what, first generation yeah. it meets that criteria. Correct, and so, View Grand National, things like that that people don't necessarily think of as a classic car. But it fits. It does. God, I hope everybody's listening. You can save you a ton of money. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And, uh, and of course, it's meant for uh, limited driving, you know, kind of like what you guys are talking about with the classic plates. For fun. Right. Yeah. And, um, but it's, you know, it's really a good thing. How do they keep yeah. track of limited driving? I mean, there's got to be some kind of protocol there, right? Uh, you would think there is, but <laughs> re realistically, there there's not... A, it, it could be audible, but it's not something that's really done. Primarily, they're looking for the enthusiast, so they can tell if yeah. you are an enthusiast. If you have a classic car, you're not going to drive it all the time because part yeah. of the time it's going to be broke. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> exactly it's right. so that's exactly right. true. That is so just absolutely you're not out of the be Just piling the miles on because part of the time you're going to be working on it. And that's probably a safeguard for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's what put me through college. <laughs> We well, you know classic cars are a great investment. And they there, are. There's not a lot, and of, they bring you joy. Number one. Yeah. What other investment can you do with that? I can't think. If you could yeah. buy something, even if you, I mean, I don't really like selling stuff myself, but if you buy something and you can drive it for however long you want and just have a big smile on your face the whole time you're driving it, and then sell it and make money or not lose money, Imagine. how awesome is that? What joy! Seriously. And then on top of it, you can ensure your investment 100. Yeah. yeah. That's and a big, that's, you know what? That is a big deal. Mm -hmm. That is classic cars. You know what doesn't bring me happy? Well, sometimes it does. Stocks. Stocks are not as de delightful as a, you know, British roadster for Christ's sake, you know? I would agree. I agree. Right? <laughs> I like them, but my, my duplex doesn't bring me as much joy. Like, there's, <laughs> you can't think of another investment that makes you happy. So, you know what I'm thinking? Uh, I really want to get one of the the S um, S197 Mustangs. Like that first time, the time that the, when they first went real retro. So 2005. Yeah. The one. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a great bike. They did a good job with that. Yeah, it's just it goes it it harks back to the classic, the, you know, to the first generation Mustang. Mm -hmm. And I have enough wine, I start looking on Craigslist, and I'm sending Chad and my dad some links. I'm like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you, I, I got it in my mind. I'm going to have that car soon. Like, I've just, it's been in my mind too much for me to not actually manifest it. You know what I mean? I support that. I think if I was going to do it, I would have to go saline S281, same body style. I respect that. Right, thank you. There you go. Fair enough. That's yeah. probably out of my price range. But... <laughs> Who was the other big tuner? Oh, there was a there was a car Roush. Yeah, it was the Roush ones. Uh, the uh, somebody that worked at the police department had a Roush. Yeah, those are really. Yeah. Who? I don't know. We have. I, I mean, just, we have a pretty good relation. We have. We have uh, police. Some of the same police officers walk by our mechanic shop and they walk in. and They tell us what they're what they're up to with their cars. So. There's a lot of yeah, a lot, of, a lot of car of... enthusiasts in that. Truly, Arena. absolutely. There's a lot of car enthusiasts everywhere. Yeah. That is, Thank God. That's very, <laughs> the very world's true. a better place just for that, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know what I would do without them. No. So, what we, do you think, Gary? On when? What is there an end of the classic car? In your opinion, are there new classic cars? There's no wrong answer. Okay, so I think that the end of the classic car, really classic, is probably going to be early '80s. Respectable. Um, yeah. uh, I, I think so. Now. You can argue that when the five mile an hour bumper came out, it kind of ended. Right? I was always kind of uh, worried about yeah. those because what if you're doing six yeah. miles an hour? Shin, <laughs> shin biters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but that '76 BMW, I had uh, had them, and um, you know the diving board bumpers, I removed them immediately. 
Yeah. But, uh, and then the 2AZX has them, but they've done a good job of integrating them into the design. So mm -hmm. just like the, the 911s did. It's a, that's a handsome there's, car. It's, it is funny too, is there's certain cars that 911s, I, I see the their five mile an hour bumpers and stuff, and I think uh, that it looks cool. And, and the Zs. Yeah. Well, on that note, I just have to say big, big thank you, Gary, for coming on and talking classic cars and hopefully, honestly, saving some of our listeners some money. That's I number so one. Too. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. No, I love money saving is my is my cup of tea. And for everybody out there, thank you so much for listening to the Bad Blonde Radio Show on News Talk KEYS 1440 AM and 98.7 FM. Peace. Deuce is spagoosh. Way to go! Cool. Awesome, right? It's fun. That is fun. I like it. I was a little nervous. The first two or three times I was all... <gasps> I was and then of, it gets easy. I was kind of nervous thinking about it, but then... Um, you didn't... Uh, you, it was not visible. But I already know you guys. It's just like sitting having a conversation with you. It is. With yeah, yeah, it is. I knew mean, yeah. it was like so... I don't know. There's no like producer sitting around here. Yeah. Film crew or anything. You're no. just like sitting around here like talking. It's, Oh, this is great. And I got a face for radio, too. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. <laughs> so funny. So that lady, Annie, yeah. and I, I, I thought about saying it on air, but I didn't want to. So she says, thanks. We tell everybody about show about your show. You have a great voice. And the irony of that is that nobody's ever freaking told that to me. I, in fact, on some of my YouTube videos, I literally have had a guy say, you sound like a frozen cat getting run through a bandsaw. Really? Yeah. Like, it's a uh, thing. Huh. Did you say something like, nice about that voice? I walked in here and you both sound like uh, perfect radio voices. <laughs> oh, nice. Thank you. Isn't that great? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Nobody, literally, that's like the opposite a, of what I've ever been. angry monotone or something. But no, it comes, it comes out great on the radio. Huh? Yeah. 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 Yeah, they got to see the headphones that I brought in? Right yes, here. All right, uh, just connect with them. Oh, good job. Sweet. You Thank you. Thank I'm going to have Chad buy some of these, two that I got on Amazon. Yeah. Thanks, Gabe. Hey, yeah, no problem. Thank you, Gabe. Yeah, um, that's cool. That's fun. That was cool. I can't believe that we're going all the way to California. What a treat. That is really Shit. neat. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm always amazed at how fast the time flies. But we can have you back on, too. I mean, yeah. I will tell you this much. Like I said, anytime you want to have me on, and you have a holler? We don't even have to uh, talk about it. I don't need to plug every time. I just well, I'd I mean, sit I talk about cars. It. I would love to talk about cars. We don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care at all. Like I said, a lot of people probably have, don't know. If they're it's listening a, about cars, they don't know about classic car yeah. insurance. And, uh, and they should. You're a friend, and you're, I'm going to ensure. I got my MG going. Oh, is he going now? found out the guy who had, I pulled the carbs off again and was looking through everything. It's like, ah, damn, it's running so shitty. And uh, I didn't look the first time I pulled him that he he jacked up the float level and uh, he had it like over an inch off. Uh, so I did that last night and started right up. Does it have two? Uh, it's two or? SUs. Oh, okay. Uh, H4s and uh, started right up. I need to drain the, the gas and all that. The gas is nasty, but I was I was stoked on that. So well, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna. Pick up the Datsun and try to put some, you know, it's not street legal yet, but you know. You can probably talk your way out of a ticket if you need to. Well, well maybe, but uh, I mean, you just going to let over anyway. Yeah, you know? no. <laughs> it's not just not going Unless you fast. get a chick cop that's like in her uh, early 20s or 30s or, you know, or 20s and 30s, then. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. the only concern. So the, uh, the, you heard what she said about the paint, right? I it's, love the patina. And then, you know what, and the, the reality of that is, like, in the future for sa sales, like, brand new, we, we see that every day. But, like. No, oh, let him paint. Well, uh, I'm You do whatever talking. you want to do. I'm no, sorry, I'm not no, talking I'm Gary's fine. wallet. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Actually, I think, um, yeah, so it needs to be painted regardless because it has some damage to it, right? But, yeah. um, you know, I. I, I don't know what's going on that car, man. That car think, actually looks good in. I, when I we were talking about it, I was thinking of like different paint. It looks good original. I would think almost all orange too looks really good. It does. Yeah. Uh, there's does. a lot of colors on that car that look good. There's but not you, a wrong choice. You can't go true. bad original true. just because if you ever did want to sell it, you people like they dig that. they dig the originality. Oh, look at that. I mean, yeah. 
I love that copper. And you went to UT, didn't you? I did. Yes. That helped. <laughs> I wish maybe you'll run for UT. So <laughs> that's his thing. He wants to go run wherever yeah. he wants to go. Cool. Yeah. I mean, UT was phenomenal. I had a darn good time there, to be honest. Running is a good, cheap sport. Yeah. Yeah. All you gotta buy is tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. <laughs> that's it. That's you it. don't have to buy like so football. Good. I played soccer, so that was pretty limited. And swimming. I, I what was were a you swimmer. Gonna say, except yeah. for what? Yeah. In track, you have to buy sports. I mean, you that's probably knew that track. already. Just, <laughs> I have so do you run fast too? You do well, yeah, long distance, I have a or what do you? Yeah, I mean, second a place state medal. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. nice. Damn. 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 So you haul. Texas, uh, Where are you now? Veterans or? Uh, GP. GP. Okay. You know what? I should have done that. My brother got one too. I don't know. Everybody's got one. 